Hi, my name is Jackie Mwangi and I'll be taking you through this video today where I'm going to share with you how to create your online course, how to do everything. If you're creating it from scratch, if you already have a course, how to scale it. If you're creating it from scratch, the different steps of, that we're going to go through, how to price it, how to find your niche, how to get your first customers and how to scale it. So that's what we're going to go through. And I run a digital marketing program where I help, I work with entrepreneurs and I help them acquire the digital marketing skills that they need to get new customers and quality leads online. So I have experience in this area and I've learned a lot in the process. A lot of mistakes have been made, a lot of things have been done that have taught me what I'm going to teach you today. So I'm going to be sharing with you a lot of these secrets, but if you really want to get the full breadth and length of it, I would recommend that you go below the screen and you sign up for the training that we're having because that's going to be a full day. So it's a crash course pretty much on a lot more than we're going to discuss today. But still, today I'm going to do my best to share with you a lot of the concepts that will help demystify and also share with you why you need to create a course so that's actually our first topic here we're talking about turning your knowledge and skills into an online course so why do this like what's the benefit one is if there's a problem that you're qualified to help others learn how to solve so if you know something that other people that you can teach other people how to solve for themselves then that makes you you know good a good candidate for creating a course and then if there's an obstacle that you overcame and learned from so an obstacle could be something like you went through a divorce you went you've lost a lot of weight you dealt with acne or you you learned something like a skill that helped you do something great achieve something you know go or go over an obstacle so you can teach people what you learned in the process what they should avoid how they should do it what steps they should follow and turn that into a course which you then monetize and another thing is if there's a skill that you've mastered so let's say you're a painter photographer you're a carpenter you're an interior designer you're you've mastered a particular skill and you're really good at it you can create a course because you can teach other people how to do what you know how to do so that's fantastic and then if you have expertise let's say you worked in a place and you have a lot of expertise in a particular area maybe you're an engineer or you're a lawyer doctor and you have expertise in a particular area that is complex for people to solve but because of your experience you're able to transfer this knowledge so imagine if you were working somewhere and you had an intern and you had to train them that training that you took that intern through somebody who's you know if you're an engineer you, you want to train somebody who perhaps has that particular skill to some extent but then there are certain other skills that they need to acquire to be successful to get to where you are so that's what you can use and create that as a course so those are a number of areas they're not the only reasons why you should create a course but these are just some of the highlights as to why you know why you should create a course and if there's a problem to be solved then they can be a course created to solve that problem so it can be anything that you know if it's um, learning how to cook for a child with autism learning how to um, improve your memory like there are courses that you can create as long as you've mastered this skill and you've you've learned how to do it so it's not by mastering the skill I mean it's not like you have a PhD in in neuroscience in order for you to teach people how to improve their memory there are a lot of things that you can learn that you've probably practiced and learned and seen to work maybe it's a combination of food and different activities and that can help improve your memory so you can turn that into a course and take people step by step from where they are to where they want to go right makes sense cool. so now let's talk about the advantages and benefits of starting a course one not everyone can afford to pay for formal education so think about it perhaps you went to a good university but not everybody can afford the same thing so if somebody wants to learn a language and perhaps you did language in in uni you could turn that into a course and teach people who may not be able to afford a full college degree how to learn that language or certain key things that you've learned that will help them achieve a particular goal so that's that's a really good idea like it's a it's a good market because even it it really does give opportunity to people to acquire a skill like the other day I was talking to somebody and she's a fashion designer so since she's learned fashion design she decided to start a fashion design school so that she can teach people who right now may not be able to afford the kind of education that she had which is a brilliant idea so that's one and then another thing is people these days want a specific 
results and they want to get it faster. So you don't have to go through four years of school to learn how to start a business or run a business. You want to do it faster and you want perhaps a particular result. Maybe you've mastered how to start the school, but you need expertise on leadership, how to recruit, how to manage your finances. So you may have a specific thing that you can teach people and you can help them get to their result faster. Because once you have this as a specific thing, you're able to teach that particular topic so you're not complicating it with everything else. You may add pieces from different areas that are relevant, but you pick that particular result that you want people to have, and that becomes your course, right? And another thing is not everything can be taught formally. So if you're looking for a cure for acne, you know, you would be hard pressed to find a school that actually teaches that. Or if you're looking for something, you know, something that could be specific, it's not everything that can be taught formally. Um, how to deal with office politics. <laughs> you know, that that's probably not a course that can be taught formally, but if you've dealt with office politics and you've managed to come out on the other side and you've got your scars, but you've, you've healed your wounds and you've got your scars, you could teach that because there are lots of people who are looking to navigate those same waters. So start looking at some of the things that you've really mastered, the things that you're really good at, and you can turn those into a course. And then another thing is, you know, most formal education, it's rigid, it takes too long, it's not updated frequently, and it's mostly theory. So if you look at like marketing right now, digital marketing is something that was not there 20 years ago. So you'll find a lot of the marketing was done and uses theories from way back when, 1980s, 1960 in some instances. And even some of the stuff that they use maybe from the 90s, it's not that updated. And that's why I teach digital marketing because I know what's the latest. I have kept up to date. So I'm able to teach people and give them an updated version of digital marketing. And I choose to work with entrepreneurs because they are my people, like they're the ones who I like to watch them get the results. Like it just, it makes me happy when I see them getting results and they are tangible results and they are hungry for these results so they'll apply what I teach because that's really important for me. So what you need to understand is that you'd be helping people get results and getting paid in the process. So this is not about you coming up with something that doesn't really work. You need to be able to help people get results. And what I'm teaching you both today and on the day that I'm having the, the live event, the live training, is that how do you take something that you know how to do? So not how do you think up of an idea and, and learn how to do this thing and then afterwards teach. No, I want you to use what you already have innately, a skill, knowledge, expertise that you already have. So you really would be helping and you'd be contributing to help improve somebody's life, somebody's business, somebody's family. So this, this really is something to think about, especially because like, why should somebody have to go through what you've already gone through and come out on the other side. When you share your knowledge, you're able to help somebody else achieve that goal, shortcut the process, not have to go through the pain that you went through. And it needs to be solving a problem that your niche wants to solve, something they're motivated to solve. So sometimes you're looking, you know, somebody may be looking at starting a course that doesn't really solve a problem for people, but it's something that they like to do. Like think of an angle that is in line with what you love, something you're good at, and something that people are willing to pay for, right? So that's, that's really important. You need to be solving a problem because a lot of the times I've seen, and even for me, I've done it where I started a course because I thought it was something brilliant. I thought, you know, this is going to be really, it's a game changer because I, you know, that was my feeling. But were people willing to buy it? Were they motivated to buy it? Was it solving a painful problem? It was solving a problem, but it wasn't painful enough for them to pay me for it. So you want to create one that's around a painful problem. All right, and I just, this diagram here is just to break down the fact that when you create a course, the thing that you're doing is just pretty much getting somebody from here, the bottom of the mountain, to the top of the mountain. So this is their goal, this is where they are right now. So that's all it is, it's not complicated, so don't look at it like, oh, you know, it's so, no, I break it down and that's what I like to do. That's why I really enjoy teaching because I'm able to take the long version of it and narrow it down into its 
essential parts, right? And this in a nutshell is, is it. That's all you're doing. You're moving somebody from one, from where they are to a desire that they have, a desired result, right? Now, in between, this is how you create frameworks. In between, there are different steps that a person would need to go through. And you know this because you've experienced it. You've done these steps. And that's how you then create a framework. So in this case, I'm using digital marketing as an example because that's what I, I teach. So you look at different things and I have a framework which I call COLA. That's uh, C for customer, O for offer, L for language, and, and uh, A for accelerant. So the different stages that somebody has to go through, this is in that order. One customer, who's your customer? Pick your niche. Then your offer, what's your offer? How do you package your offer? And I talk extensively around this because if you get this part wrong around your offer, then you can have a really beautiful course, a really beautiful framework, a, an ability to create the transformation. But if you don't package it well, then people may not see the value of it. And then language is how do you talk in the language that will get your niche to take action, to understand what you're saying, to drive that point home. How do you write copy that sells? So language, that's also really important because again, you can have a, a customer, you've got your niche, you've got a really great offer, but then you talk in what we used to call like mother than you. <laughs> it's not very clear. It's not resonating with your audience and so they don't understand the value again of what it is that you have to offer so it's important to have your niche to have your offer to have to speak their language and then once you've got that right you can now come and use the accelerant and the accelerant are things like paid ads which will help you scale your business and not just in your market or in your country but you can scale you don't just have to sell in kenya you can sell to other to people in other markets because once you're paying for ads they'll get your ad or your message as long as you've done it right in front of the right audience with the right offer so that's how you now amplify. And a lot of times people start here, they start by running ads with the accelerant and they have this creative, which I look at and I'm like, oh, I, I wish you'd just come to my school so I can make your money worthwhile. Cause you're going to spend money here and you're going to lose it if you do it the wrong way. You need to know how to do these things well, but also you need to understand how the algorithm will reward you. What does it like? What works, what doesn't work? How do you lower your cost per click, increase, whew, increase your relevance score because the more relevant the more engaging your ad is the lower you pay per click so things like those are to help you spread your budget and use it better so that's my framework the cola framework to get you from here from not knowing anything at all to the goal of becoming an expert digital marketer who owns the business and you can even decide to use that as a business like to give it as a value add what i'm teaching you once you know how to master it you can actually start an agency and and um do it for people because there's a lot of demand in that area so this that's also another opportunity in case you're trying to think of a new business line to go into so that's how you teach your that's how you teach your course. That's how you structure your course. You create those frameworks. And within a framework, sometimes you'll have like a framework within a framework. So I'll talk more around how to structure this on the day, how to structure your framework, how to make sure that it's in the right order. Because this order came from a lot of experimentation and a lot of learning and sometimes doing the wrong thing. I was experimenting on myself and my, my friends, not at the point at which I was charging, but at the point at which I was trying to understand what will get people to their result. So this, it's also important to know how to order the things correctly. And then there's price. This is actually, uh, you know, for a lot of people, this is a very difficult thing to understand. And I've tried out different things. And when it comes to pricing, especially for like artists, artists are great. They're very talented. Most people who are artists have a very hard time pricing their services because a service is is very or a painting you're thinking oh i just spent two hours on that painting how much should i charge for it so there's a method to the madness around doing your pricing and it's also important to know who it is who's your audience like who are you going to sell this to and actually i've already started because the things that you need to consider when you're doing your pricing is one the value of the result that you're selling so how valuable is it think about it like if if you had a magic pill which could cure breast cancer, how much do you think people would pay for it? 
the result, the problem that it's solving is so painful that you'd be able to charge a premium and people would pay for it because of the value of the result, right? Yeah, does it make sense? Cool. And then on top of the value, the market. So look at the marketplace and see what else is in the market. Who's your competition? Who's, who's selling something similar to you or selling something that will also get people to that result? So consider that. Uh, consider the ability of your niche to pay as well. So I mentioned earlier that you need to consider your market, who you're designing this for. Also consider their ability to pay. Because if you're, if you're targeting a, a group of people who maybe their, their disposable income is very little per month, they have very little left over, but they need this particular skill, then you have to price accordingly. You have to, of course, consider that you're going to price low, but hopefully get the high volumes. And it's a very risky thing to do it that way. But if your market is large enough and the problem is painful enough, then you can get away with it. So those are the three things. And yes, a lot of the times, you know, like the question, do you create your course and price it? Do you price it then create your course? What would you say? Tell me in the in the comment section what you think. Do you price it and create it or create it and then price it? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear your answer. And then I'll be giving you the answer to that during the training, the live training. So I want you to come for that live training so you can get the answer. Because this one, this part will blow your mind. Okay? All right, now we've gotten to launching your course. So first thing first, you want to have a prototype. Like when you're launching your course, you want to have like, you know, a prototype of the course that you're looking at selling. But before you, you know, when you do your... Okay, so let me come back. And now we come to launching your course. So when you're launching your course, there are a number of things that I want you to factor. First of all, and a lot of people have this idea that you create this course, you create the final product, and then after that you launch it, you go to market, and then people will come and they'll buy the course. That's the wrong approach. You want to create, you want to get the market first. So you want to do your research. Like for me, before I created this, the digital marketing program that I teach, which is called 10X Marketing, I did a lot of webinars i did a lot of like uh, face a number of facebook lives i did um, a lot of content i spent a lot of time observing i talked to business owners i went for events i just started talking to people to try and understand is there value in what it is that i'm teaching and what price point as well because that's one of the ways you can use to determine how much people will pay to solve that problem so i would recommend that before you create that course you need to test and see whether the market is even ready whether there's actually a need because it's very expensive on your time and maybe even the resources that you're going to use to create that course and if it doesn't work then you're going to feel disheartened you're going to say this course thing doesn't work i'm dealing with the wrong niche but you really could have been solving the wrong problem for the right people or you, you're solving the right problem for the wrong people so you want to really get to understand that so before you create that course i recommend you do your homework do all this like do webinars free thing free webinars a lot of these things if you can do speaking engagement if you have that platform do that before you create the course see what the demand is and then you can come and create a prototype so a prototype is pretty much like a minimum viable product so it's something that you can use to test to see what whether the your framework and what you want to teach will actually get people the results so this is really great for testing again is your course going to get people results because sometimes you may need to adjust certain things sometimes it's a you may yeah you may need to make changes actually most of the time i can tell you you rarely launch a course and it's perfect the first time so you want to create a prototype then you want to find people to test your prototype with so sometimes you're thinking, oh, you know, um, I don't know if this course is going to work. Say you're helping people heal acne with food or with a particular um, skincare regime thing that you've come up with and discovered that it works. And you want to create this thing. Uh, you want to create a course around it. Test it first. 
test it tell people hey you know come i'm doing this thing and i'm doing it for free and that's what i mean when i say test it like you're going to do it for free and then use that as proof and to get your testimonials because you don't want to go live in market and then launch this course and it doesn't get people results because if it doesn't get them results it's only a matter of time before you build a bad reputation and i don't want you to do that this is long term i remember in the beginning when i said I want you to have an impact. I want you to make people's lives and businesses better, not to become a headache. So that's important. You want to make sure that you can get results. Now, the second part is how to launch your course. And there is a way to launch your course and get the best results. So most of the times I recommend starting when you're launching your course after you've tested it and made sure that it gets people the results, then you want to launch your course by providing value, like a sneak preview to show people the kind of thing, the kind of value that they'll be able to get from your program. So think about it like a movie trailer. If you want to watch a movie and you've never heard of it and you don't know anything about it, you want to watch a trailer and see, hey, what is this movie about? And that's what entices you. So that's how to launch. That's one of the ways to launch your course. And then the next step is feedback because you want, excuse me, you want to take the feedback that you get once you launch your course and use it to keep improving your course. But you have to know how to read your feedback because sometimes if you can see my diagram here, and this is a really bad illustration, but it's, it's to remind me about the story of a guy who was digging looking for gold and he kept digging 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 and then he gave up just before he got the gold but that's the thing even with your course once you launch your course if you want to use the feedback to improve but sometimes the feedback can be so bad you need to know what parameters like how to know what it is that tells you this is a failed course or what it is that tells you that you just need to make improvements because it could be something like the order of your framework it could be something like the duration to give people the results because maybe you're providing uh, not a complicated result but you're taking too long and people want to get it faster so there are different things that you need to know you need to know how to read that feedback so that you can keep iterating and now I'll tell you about the next thing is really exciting for me because it is the flywheel. So the flywheel, Jim Collins wrote a book, Good to Great, where he talked about creating a flywheel. And a flywheel is pretty much like a, a think of it like a, a system that fulfills itself. Everything that works within that system works to support each element in that system and the more people you have in your flywheel the better it gets so it just rotates and gets better and gets better and the more people it builds momentum so a lot of companies like amazon have used this concept and become really successful in it so i have this thing that i call a course flywheel and what a course flywheel is is it's your course your course your enrollment the transformation you're providing and turning people into fans. So when you start off with your course, you want to get traffic. So you want to know how to build traffic into your course so that you can increase your enrollment. That is really important for the flywheel because a flywheel doesn't work when it's working with very small numbers. It needs to have build this momentum and it needs growth, consistent growth. And it's usually hungry. It needs you to do it on a regular. It needs you to do it quickly so that it can get it can spin and keep growing. So the faster you learn how to generate traffic, the better for your enrollment. And this traffic, like one of the most efficient systems or platforms in the world right now is digital, the digital space, the online marketing space. So that's a, a huge opportunity for you to generate traffic. But there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it, which is why I teach it. I teach people how to get traffic, how to use this platform to reach the right audience with the right message and understand how the algorithm works so that they can stretch their budgets so traffic is really key then you have enrollment so traffic will lead you to enrollment enrollment once you have your frameworks and you have this part well organized it leads to the transformation right and this transformation is why people are signing up with you. That's why they're coming to your course. They're coming to your course so that you can give them a transformation. And once you give them that transformation, guess what you have after that? You've got a fun because this person has benefited from that transformation. So what do you need to do to give to get that fun? In addition to getting them the transformation, there's the experience that you're giving them, both from the results and from working with you. And that's what turns them into a fun. 
and then they tell others and the others also sign up for your course so you're now getting traffic from two sources both the fans who are telling others and getting them to sign up for your course and the traffic you're generating through digital marketing so that's the best way to build this flywheel and get it to work for you and there's a holy grail of this flywheel and that's a way in which you now automate this process and once you automate it you turn it evergreen so you turn it into an evergreen um, course and evergreen means that people can come in at any time they can come in at like whenever it is that they come in it doesn't really matter and the beauty about evergreen is that you can sell this course on Christmas Day when you're hanging out with your family you can sell it while you're asleep you can sell it while you're doing other things you're researching and working with your clients and coaching them the course turning your course evergreen helps you to increase that ability that freedom that you've been looking for you've been looking for freedom so that you have more time to spend with your family you've got more time to spend on yourself you don't want to get overwhelmed because that's the thing when you build traffic you now have the the possibility of getting overwhelmed so you want to make your course evergreen so that it constantly is able to work for you and if you can automate your evergreen um, course that that really like this is the holy grail right but there are things that you need so in order to do this it takes a while and i recommend that you start don't start with the evergreen like start with um maybe you just have student uptake coming in at particular times or you're not you're not fully automated yet because there's a lot of automation that needs to happen in this particular case you don't want to start there because sometimes as i mentioned earlier you're not even sure about your course um you need to read the results you need to see to get the other things that i've talked about to work well for you then you come to this point which is why i saved this for last so turning your course over green evergreen there are tools that you need to use that will help you there's traffic that you need to generate to keep pumping this because this remember the flywheel and what i talked about then how you measure it and what's the process so you want to understand and these are the things that i really go into detail on on the one day crash course that that i'm doing again the link is below this video so i really want you to go there and sign up register get your ticket because that way you and i can spend the day together and we can really talk about these concepts in depth and there's a lot more that i share if you like what you're hearing now like like this video um subscribe to my channel if you're on youtube but just know that this is the tip of the tip of the iceberg so if you want to know a lot more if you want to know what tools you need to use if you want to know and tools that i've, I've used i use myself and, and that will work for our market because sometimes some of these tools don't integrate so you might end up getting a tool that won't be able to work with certain things so i've tried this i've practiced this i i know the tools that work really well then you need to know like what's the process of doing it you know how i just told you that ideally you end in this you end here but you don't start here so what's the process what's what are the other pieces of getting to the evergreen course and then how do you get that traffic so that your evergreen course always has traffic and that way you're able to make sure that you can pay for the tools you can pay yourself you're getting you know that it's profitable actually here you want to make sure that it's profitable so this is really important and the reason also that we start with the other steps is again we need to make sure I remember there are certain things like the demand um the kind of uh, process like the frameworks do they work is there is it helping people transform so those tweaks that you need to do and then also check profitability because you need to make sure it's profitable before you come here because if you try to scale a course that's not profitable you're just going to go bankrupt so we need to make sure that the other pieces are working first and there's a, a lot more around the process before you get to turn your course evergreen and scale it and then also measurement there are so many you know one of the things i remember learning and i've learned this the hard way and you know through being told as well is that if you're not measuring like a lot of the things that you do in your entire business you need to do your measurement and by measurement i mean reporting you need to be so good at reporting and doing the measurement of these things that it's what is going to guide you 
on everything. It's what's going to guide you on whether you're making a profit. It's what's going to guide you on whether your program is working. It's what's going to guide you on what improvements to make. It's what's going to guide you on the best sources of traffic. It's going to guide you on the best type of content that's resonating with your niche. All these things are so important. And a lot of the times people are taught like the fluffy things, you know, oh, create this, choose this picture and all that. I make sure that I teach you and I give you templates to measure because measurement is super important. This is the Msemakweli, the one that will tell you the truth about what's really happening in your business. So I want your business to be built on a strong foundation and to work long term, which is why that is important. If we're just looking at building something for a year, you know, then maybe hit or miss. But if you're looking at building something long term and something that you can scale, you need to have the the tools, the reports, you need to know what to measure. What are the most important key performance indicators to measure? What 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 what's the guide? Like what's the benchmark between what is good in that KPI, that key performance indicator, and what is not? What needs to be improved? So you need to know these things and that's what we go into detail as i mentioned during the live training because the training at least we have a day you can imagine if i've been able to pack this much within this short video i think it might be about half an hour so if i've been able to pack this much for you how much more can i pack when i have the day to spend with you and on top of that I have Poli Kapigade who will also be attending because he's a subject matter expert in certain areas that are very important for business and I want he, I want him to actually tell you about them so that you can build a strong business because as I mentioned, we are looking at you building a, a strong business, a business that's a legacy, a business that is making you money 24-7, that you can scale going to other markets and help impact lives and businesses in those markets. So I want him to share with you things like how do you pick a market or find the opportunity within a market that is long term. Things that will really help you understand like where is the ball going. I like I like to use this metaphor where I say, you know, there's some people who when you're playing football with them, they're running towards the ball. Polycap is one of those people who runs to where the ball is going. So by the time he, the ball gets there, he's re there and ready and prepared. So I want him to share with you some of these things so that you can use these techniques in your business. And there's a lot more that he's going to share with you. So I want you to sign up for the training. Go below the screen, click that, uh, click that link, register, get your ticket, pay for it. You'll get a lot more value than what you're paying for. I can guarantee you that. This is not, I mean, if you followed me long enough, you know, I'm not about poor quality things. I look at do, creating the, the price that you're going to, the investment, sorry, not price, but the investment that you're going to put in. My intention is to give you 10 times what you're paying. So that's the whole point, like give you much more than what it is that you're paying for. And you'll see, like I've even done a table that shows the value of what we are going to, what um, you're going to get in terms of monetary terms. So I really want you to take advantage. And in the event that you click and you find that the seats are not available, like, um, because I can't, a lot of people have been signing up and we have limited capacity. So in the event that you don't take action now or you're late and you procrastinate, you may not get a seat. But if you do get, because this video is going to be running. So if you do get that, the seats are all sold out. Um, unfortunately, yeah, like I, I, I don't know about doing another one. Maybe we'll think about it in the future. I don't know. It was already hard to get him um, to take this this um, day and come and talk to us so I don't know about the future that's why I recommend that you do that now but you can always just register your interest for the next one if there ever will be one and we can keep you notified so click that link and hopefully there are still tickets available and I will see you on the day when I get to share a lot more with you so we'll see you there